So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Grace, and I am the Digital Service Squad team member based out of Community Future Chinook in Tabor, Alberta. I'm excited to join you all today to discuss social media content. As Darren mentioned, chat and Q&A functions are located on the right of your screen. And if you would like to make your presentation full screen, please click the button on the top right corner of the presentation. When posting on social media, it can be tempting to slap together some content and throw it up on your page. You might feel like you don't have the time or the energy to think about what you're doing and how it relates to your business. You just know you need to push out promotional content on social media. The thing is, is this approach can lead to bad results. For example, you might post something that doesn't work for your audience or your brand, or worse, something that can damage the relationship you've worked hard to build with your customers over time. When you take more time with your content and to cur curate a strategy and give it more thought, you'll ensure that each post is valuable and engaging for your followers. In addition, by crafting creative content specific to each channel, you'll be able to spread awareness for your brand naturally and organically. Number one, when you're getting into social media marketing and advertising, it's finding your audience. I cannot stress how big this is and how big of a game changer it can be. Targeting everyone won't get your business the largest pool of customers. Having too broad of an audience could be the exact reason your company is not getting any new customers or any new engagement on your social media content. When you try to appeal to everyone, you really find that you're not appealing to everyone. <laughs> you're not appealing to anyone, I mean. When you try to appeal to everyone, you fail to provide relevance and you get diluted in the process. In other words, you lose the power to attract or charm your customers. Your audience is built up of real people. So get to know them as real people with real needs and wants. This is so important when developing your social media strategy. Number two is having a social media strategy in general. Too often, businesses' social media channels become oversaturated with self-promotional posts. You must always approach your social media efforts with a strategy to get the most out of your actions. As tempting as it is to hop on every trend and use every new meme that graces the internet it, in your marketing, it is still important to incorporate a strategy. Too often, brands lean too much into selling, 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 when in fact, pushing product or services should only be such a small portion of your business's marketing strategy. The first strategy we're going to talk about today is called the social media rule of thirds. I like this content strategy because it disperses different types of content across your channel without um, that oversaturation of selling and self-promotional material. Uh, the rule of thirds is a balance between promoting your products and services and sharing ideas and tips and news from other sources and building a personal relationship with your customers. It basically breaks it down into three different sections, promotional material, education material, and interactive material. Promotional content is content that directly promotes your business's product and services, and is aimed at converting readers and generating profit. Uh, promotional materials is posts about your products and services. So as I have in the example here, I have uh, a product photo of a Cetaphil um, face scrubber. So this is a product photo. It's directly aimed at having you buy that product. It's that selling post. Um, you can also have promotional material for different sales, different events that's happening within your business, but your promotional materials is basically what's aimed at bringing and selling a specific product or service or getting people to uh, participate in a certain sale and or event. Uh, next, we have educational material. So this is posts about news, resources, and tips that are relative to your business. This is your content that shares ideas and stories and thoughts um, from leaders in your industries and like-minded businesses. 
Um, I like to think as educational content is selling the benefits of what your product has to offer, showing people how to use it, how to videos, how to posts, anything that is going to show your readers or show your customers the benefit of what you're trying to sell in those promotional posts, um, but giving them a taste of um, what they can do with it, how it's going to benefit them and why they should be uh, investing in your company and in your brand. Um, again, I have a, an example below there and it's uh, tips to take care of your skin. So this, obviously we do not see a specific product linked to this post, um, but it's giving you tidbits and um, education relative to the C to fill product that is going to give you benefit and going to pique your interest of, oh, this is really valuable information. Maybe I'll look more into um, purchasing from that company. So it's again, not that selling point of view, but selling a benefit versus selling a product. I like to um, say, you wanna sell the sizzle versus selling the steak. You wanna sell that benefit versus selling the actual product itself. Um, and lastly, we have interactive content. So this is the content that is aimed at entertaining your audience. So these are posts and content that encourages your audience to interact with you. But also I like to say it's also you interacting with different trends, different things that might be happening in pop culture, memes, all those sorts of things are interactive content. So you interacting with trends, memes, new TikTok dances, all that sort of stuff falls under interactive content. And below, I just provided another example from the same brand of them showing that they're participating in kind of like a pop culture trend that was uh, surfaced for a little bit. And you can see a lot of companies adopt and try and use that uh, memes and pop culture and diff different things like that to help promote their business. And that falls under the interactive. Uh, what also falls under your interactive content is your UCG, so your user-generated content. So this is when you encourage um, your customers to send you reviews, um, post a picture of you using their product, and then again, taking that content and using it for your business. The next strategy we're going to talk about is another content mix option. Uh, and it's called the 80-20 rule. So it's the same idea as the rule of thirds. It's just a different way of looking at it and a different way of balancing your content mix. So 80% of your posts should inform, educate, or entertain your audience. So again, that's your, your material that's not based on selling. That's you selling the benefit. That's you building that relationship with your customer through entertainment, education and things they're going to find of humor of value um, and are going to make you really trust uh, your business and then 20 percent is that directly promote your brand and your product so again this is your product photography this is you selling an actual product or actual service or whatever your business is pushing out to generate revenue or get people interacting with your brand uh, your promotional material is that selling point. And as you can see, 20% selling, 80% customer value slash relationship building. Consistency is key. I like to refer to this as the not so secret formula to social media marketing. The number one tip for consistency is as simple as showing up and delivering engaging and inspiring content on your social media channels. Consistency is bringing a specific voice and feeling to your customers through an already steady messaging and shared aesthetic across all marketing channels. So showing up consistently and giving a consistent feel, consistent messaging, consistent aesthetic to everything you do within your brand. An example I like to use for consistency is the no-name brand. Just look for the yellow packaging 
and that's their motto and it is consistent across everything they do. Once you know what you stand for, consistency is an imprint of yourself on everything you do. A consistent tone, a consistent aesthetic, a consistent messaging. Basically, I like to use this brand because no name brand tells the same joke repeatedly and it gets better every time. Uh, some tips to staying consistent that we see scattered all across this brand are having a mission statement. No name's mission statement is no nonsense, no frills. Their basic yellow and black marketing is clean to the point, no nonsense. Uh, creating a brand kit. So creating a tool uh, with the right color codes with the same font uh, to making sure your logo is in an easy accessible spot for anyone who has access to your social media and is posting on your social media. So they have access to those materials and they can keep that consistency across all channels uh, of marketing, especially social media. Um, using the same color palette on all marketing assets. As we can see, no name brand uses the same yellow and black on everything. Their packaging, their social media, their website, their videos, they keep it consistent. Using a consistent logo across all channels. Obviously you can have different versions of your logo, but making sure you're incorporating that same logo in logo, logo colors, logo fonts into your branding is very important for brand trust and recognition. And basically keeping a consistent posting schedule is another big thing for consistency. Don't disappear. Stay consistent. I'm not saying that you posting every single day that or posting three times a day, but just don't disappear. Stay in the minds of your consumers and be consistent uh, in the messaging you're providing. Brand consistency is doable for any business. Every business has its own personal style. Hold on to that style. Don't and hold on to that style to let it flourish and grow and be a revenue driving force. As we can see, ironically here, No Name's anti-brand approach has had a large following for the Canadian grocery store and has been a huge marketing um, marketing drive for them and um, just has been very successful for them. And their number one thing that they they do is being consistent in everything they do. Um, so like I said, just a huge part of social media marketing is staying consistent in everything you do and everything you put out. Cross selection check, show your favorite cross. Your cross that you wear the most, your newest cross. As I discuss the next concept, I will be show I'll be using the shoe company Crocs, as you can see, as an example. I know that as I'm saying this, some of you are probably thinking, um, are Crocs cool again? Uh, the reason I love using Crocs as an example when I'm talking about social media marketing is because, of course, we all know in the early 2000s, they were at the peak of their popularity. However, we also saw in 2008, Crocs suffer a loss of $185 million. Uh, the novelty of the rubber, rubber cl clogs wore off and Crocs slipped from our radar um, and basically became uncool and kind of dorky. And no one really was purchasing Crocs until recently. Uh, we saw a resurgence of many, of a resurgence of Crocs that may surprise those who are not tuned in to the world of Gen Z, but it's no coincidence. Uh, Crocs as a whole is extremely digital savvy and very good with what they do in their digital marketing. And it's a huge factor in their kind of renaissance back into the mainstream. Um, they have rocked the social media world by fully committing to their digital marketing efforts, especially on social media channels such as TikTok and Instagram. And it's been a huge thing, like I said, to creating that renaissance of them going from not cool to cool again. And it's just a cool case study to look at if you're interested in kind of um, 
those success stories of social media and everything they do in their social media is something a small business can easily incorporate into what they're doing. But ultimately, what I want to talk about on this slide is day by day, social media seems to grow more and more complex with updates and new features constantly changing the way people consume digital marketing. Um, Instagram, for example, at one point was just a place where we shared photos, but has expanded into uh, being able to have short videos called reels, stories, images, graphics, you name it. Um, so as you can see on the screen, these four are what I like to kind of call the basics of social media um, and grasping on to kind of finding your perfect mix of um, adopting these different types of content. Firstly, here we have a video, um, specifically in this example, we have a TikTok video. Video is a great way to engage your audience, but it can take time to determine what options will be best for your brand. As a result, video content pops up, pops up in various formats across social media. Of course, we have long corporate videos um, that are usually a, more than a more than 30 seconds, so a couple minutes long that are interview type style businesses um, that are a deeper dive into the business and what they do. Um, we also have social media shorts. So this is reels and TikToks. We also see vlog content on channels like um, YouTube and that sort of thing, as well as Q and A videos, which we see pop up on stories and how to videos again, which a lot of times we see in reels and TikToks as well. And then live stream video as well is uh, another format of which we see video content kind of pop up on our social media. Uh, the next kind of content style we have, I have here is story content. So social media stories started on Snapchat, but have branched out to nearly every social media platform there is. Uh, these are quick, typically 10 to 15 second videos uh, that give people slightly different glimpse into a person or business's day-to-day um, -day activities or what they're up to, and these disappear within 24 hours. Well, our feed content is carefully curated, social media stories tend to be more spontaneous. As a result, your story content doesn't have to be nearly as polished as what you put on your timeline or your social media feed. Next, we have just your basic image, uh, um, a picture or um, a snapshot of um, your product, photography, or something with a person in it doing, doing something with your product or performing your service. Uh, visual content is so much more digestible and engaging than large blocks of text or an article. Uh, pictures and images are some of the most accessible content to create. It's as simple as grabbing your smartphone or grabbing a camera and snapping a picture. Um, some tips I have for um, this type of content, so uh, incorporating images into your social media, is A, avoid using stock images the best you can. People want to see you, they want to see your business, and they want to put themselves either in the atmosphere of someone using your product, um, or they want to put themselves right in your store making that purchase. Um, so it's important that you consider taking your own photography of your product, avoid using um, pictures, stock photos of other people, and take your own photos. Um, like I said, we all have a camera on our smartphone. Uh, it's just taking that step and snapping a photo. Uh, that's what people want to see. They want, especially in a local small business um, world, um, especially in these smaller communities that some of you are in, um, they've been into your business, they've seen your face, and that's what they want to see on your digital marketing as well. As well, I just mentioned, uh, people heavy images do so much better um, than just posting pictures of your product all the time. Obviously, strong product photography can do super well as, 
super well as well. Um, but people like to see real people. They, as we can see in this picture I grabbed from Crocs, um, a girl on her wedding day wearing Crocs. It gives us a different feeling than just seeing a picture of those white shoes on a black background. Um, it gives us um, a feeling, a trust in the brand uh, that a product photo just doesn't do because um, it inflicts emotion and that's what's going to drive people to make purchases and build a relationship with your brand or business. Lastly, we have a graphic post. So social media graphics are a visual component that combines image, text, logo, and other graphic elements. Uh, we are all not graphic designers, I know that. However, there's tons of free tools out there, Canva being a huge one that is also free, that is perfect for exploring and trying to make this type of content. Um, the one thing I always stress when using Canva, especially if you're using the free version, um, there's so many beautiful templates and go ahead, take advantage of those, but try and make them as unique and as, um, curated to your brand and your content as possible. Like I mentioned earlier in this presentation, stay consistent, use those templates, but make sure you're making them original and curated towards your brand and your brand identity. Um, because people um, who use Canva, me as a Canva user, uh, if you're just grabbing that template and inputting your own stuff, um, I can scroll through social media and tell you each business that's using a Canva template. So no harm in using the templates, but try your best to make them as unique as possible. Next, we're just going to talk about some, talk about some different types of content. And this kind of goes back to those first strategies I was talking about. So taking this content idea and then bringing it back and mixing it in and creating your content mix. So first we have Flickr content, reactive content. Flickr, Flickr in content involves participation in trending hashtags, sounds, or memes. So like I said, this kind of falls within your interactive content. So Flickr content is usually a singular post um, and it's you, like I said, participating in a TikTok dance, like I have this video here. It's a trending TikTok sound. They use trending hashtags, they use trending sounds, they use trending dances, and then they put their own personal touch from the brand into that video. So you see this a lot on TikTok. Uh, Flickr content is pretty much exactly what TikTok and Reels are. Um, it's hopping on those different trends, sounds, hashtag dances, ex and but we also see it um, involving pop culture memes and that sort of thing into product and services as well, which we can see right here. Uh, the next content style we have is flash content. So these are more thought out campaigns. So flash content brings the brand story to life in an authentic and entertaining way. So the way Crocs does it is um, the first campaign we see here is the Lightning McQueen Crocs. And that was kind of um, a nostalgia back to their original, their original upbringing when they released these and that sort of thing. So this was a campaign and product collaboration, of course, that was a not just a singular post, but a campaign they stretched over um, a full month. Same with the just this Justin Bieber post as well. Um, it's a collaboration with Justin Bieber, a campaign they stretch across multiple posts using multiple types of messaging, but ultimately with the same goal, same look, same feel to the whole campaign. And lastly, we have our flare content. So this is a large scale campaign or initiative. So flare content is a large scale campaign that invites your audience to engage and create their own content. So basically, um, the example I have here is of a campaign that Crocs did called Crocs Care, where they basically called out those in the social, those in the healthcare industry through social media, um, to honor National Nurse Week. 
Um, so they gave away free pairs of Crocs to healthcare workers, and they used this as a campaign throughout the week using a trending hashtag. Um, but initially, they posted actual real photos of healthcare workers that had been sent in, um, encouraging people to engage and um, that sort of thing, especially um, kind of a giveaway type campaign as well. But it was large scale and something they planned out and uh, executed over a whole week. Um, so that's the type of long scale campaign that a flare content would be. Um, as I have said, um, implementing these campaigns, uh, you kind of use this type of content that we're using here, and then you go back to the beginning of the presentation, and then you find out how these campaigns are going to fit into your content mix. Basically, the key to any successful social media campaign or initiative is being consistent, as we talked about, being visual, um, adapting and using those types of content, story, video, image, graphic, and being human. Um, so finding out who our audience is, talking to them and curating content that's going to build a bigger and better relationship with our customers. That's why we use social media, not to just sell, sell, sell. We want to lean more into um, being more human and um, talking to people because they are real people, as I have mentioned. So in implementing the Flickr flash flare content strategy, any brand can build and grow an audience as well as finding a content mix that works best for your business. If a strong digital pre presence can help croc make Crocs cool again, think about what you can do for your business, big or small. There is so much potential for your business um, through digital adoption and social media. Um, you just got to get out there and do it. Um, so now I'm just going to open the floor to uh, any questions. Um, yeah, thanks, Grace. Um, yeah, I think we got a couple questions here. Um, I know this one, you hear it a lot from different people, and I know I've, I've heard it from different people as well. Um, how many times a week should I be posting? I think this goes back to... Um, this is my personal feelings on it, is that it goes back to that consistency portion of um, consistency portion of social media. Um, I'd rather see quality content on social media and so would your customers um, than you just posting to post. Um, so if you can curate um, good content and be present, and like I said, don't disappear, I think that's as much as you need to know. Personally, I don't think there's a magic number to how much you can post on social media. But like I said, just being consistent, don't disappear. Uh, find what works best for your business because what your, works for your business might not work for another business. So if you find that you're kind of three posts a week is working for you with your time management and um, those, types of, those types of things as well, then stick to your three posts a week that are quality content that are thought through rather than worrying about posting five times a week and stressing that you don't have two posts and just throwing stuff out there that um, isn't getting the right message across or is really falling short of that connection to your customers. Sounds good. Um, another question here. Uh, can I post the same content on all my channels or should I change it on different platforms? So this one's a tricky one because it's very easy to just post the same thing on, especially channels that are super integrated within each other, like Instagram and Facebook. Um, it's super easy to just throw up the same post on both. Um, and there's definitely content that is going to be valuable on both channels. So absolutely. Um, but again, it's I think it's really taking the time to identify who your audience is and where they are. Um, like I said, we look at more of an older audience on Facebook and kind of more of maybe a younger Gen Z audience on, on Instagram. So if you're identifying that these are your different 
audiences. Maybe you're running different campaigns on Facebook and Instagram that are curated um, specifically to those different audience groups. Um, but yeah, like I said, biggest thing for that question is getting down and figuring out who your audience actually is. Okay. Um, and one last one here. Um, any tips on how to make social media less time consuming? Um, it's hard to stay consistent when it takes so long to create social media campaigns. Um, I said I, I'm going to use this one to kind of bring it back to the program. Um, taking advantage of your local digital service squad um, team member and maybe setting up a meeting with them that would allow them to show you different free tools that are out there, such as Canva, such as scheduling platforms like um, Meta Business Suite, Hootsuite, later different third party schedules out there and content creation tools that can make it really easy for a business owner to uh, find the time for social media. Uh, scheduling is huge. Um, if you learn how to schedule, um, you can kind of set aside the couple hours every two weeks to schedule out your, your social media campaigns and then um, only posting maybe social media posts as things come up, some more reactive content. Um, so yeah, I would say those are the biggest things in um, helping you um, make social media less time consuming.